So the uh, project is taking place on the Arctic Ocean, and the route it sets off from off of the Alaskan coast uh, on the edge of the permanent uh, or perennial ice cap, which is about here. Uh, it's a 2,000 kilometer trek deep into the Arctic Ocean, all the way to the North Geographic Pole. The survey route is 2,000 kilometers, and we're resupplied every two weeks. And we need to take everything for the survey operation and for our survival um, for those two week periods. The project has uh, invested uh, considerable resources in developing a unique uh, uh, measuring device, which is a ground penetrating radar uh, that is portable. It weighs less than five kilograms. Normally, they normally weigh about 100 kilograms. Um, we can drag it behind the sledge. And that is taking measurements every 10 centimeters for the entire 2,000 kilometer journey. So um, the mass would suggest that's about 20 million ultra detailed uh, cross profiles through the ice as we make our way north to the North Geographic Pole. You've been traveling in the Arctic since the 80s. How has the Arctic changed since you first began exploring it? My personal experience is that I haven't actually seen that much evidence of, of change um, because over a 15 year period it's just not possible to really discern. I mean there's, there's been, there was open water there when I first went uh, 15 uh, years ago or so. So, um, uh, but there are sort of historical things that are starting to emerge. Um, for example, it becomes increasingly difficult for uh, explorers to set off from the northernmost beaches of Russia to reach the North Geographic Pole and classically that is the, what uh, explorers are looking to do when they are undertaking challenges rather than exploration is to set off from a beach from dry land and head out to the North Geographic Pole. That's becoming quite hard. The ice simply isn't there often enough in the year now to be able to do that. How can you accurately predict when the ice will melt using the instruments you're taking along with you? Um, while there is some uh, merit in the survey uh, from a sort of snapshot in time point of view, a view of, of, of how thick the ice is. Clearly that's not going to help us indicate um, how long the ice cap will, will survive as a sort of standalone data set. The data can be used though to improve the accuracy of all the estimates that we currently have for the, from the last 30 years from satellites and indeed from submarines because we're able to strip the snow layer away from the ice layer and provide actual measurements rather than these estimates. Neither satellites nor submarines can discern the difference between the snow layer and the ice layer beneath. Now, in determining how long the North Pole ice cap will be with us, it is critical to know the thickness of the ice only. And that thickness is simply not known. It is thought to be somewhere between two and a half and three meters but um, no one actually knows it may be less than that it may be more than that the ipcc has um is, is of them has until recently been the most quoted source on a sort of lifespan expectancy if you will of, of this ice cap and they've been saying 50 to 100 years now it is a sort of fearsomely complex subject but if i was to generalize I would say that that uh, estimate, or that projection technically, is um, really looking at two uh, variables. Rates of shrinkage inwards as the ice cap gets smaller each summer, or indeed in any given month, uh, year on year, and very long range atmospheric weather, if you like, forecasts, I mean, 50 to 100 year long forecasts. It is essentially a two-dimensional view of the area, changes in the area, surface area of the ice cap. However, new thinking uh, emerging from, uh, most particularly from the US Navy's Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey in California, with, with, with whom we are working uh, most closely, are saying it's not just about the area, it's about the volume of, held of ice within the ice cap. Um, and therefore, while we know the area very accurately from satellites, what we don't know is the thickness. If we can know the thickness through this survey that we're doing, and we know the area, we then have the volume. If you look at um, the rate of uh, decline of the area of the ice cap, 
you have, a, if you like, a relatively shallow decline, which suggests that it will disappear in 50 to 100 years. If you look at the rates of decline assumed, estimated, of the volume of the ice cap, it is a much steeper graph, and it is that um, sort of volumetric decline that is indicating actually not just um, by 2020, the latest estimates from the US Navy are that it will be uh, uh, potentially just five years before we have no summer ice on the ice uh, on the Arctic Ocean. Just five years, that's 2012. And so what this survey is about is trying to uh, provide the data that will enable scientists to predict m with, with a much tighter window whether it's um, you know, five to 10 years or 95 to 100 years and attach a much higher degree of confidence on that prediction. Uh, you're very well known as um, someone who gives motivation to people um, via your um, polar travel company. You've, you've taken people from all walks of life to the North Pole and the South Pole. Do you see yourself as using those gifts to communicate your work to the public? Um, I think that the role of, or the, I think that the value of a, an explorer, and this is real exploration, um, I feel, um, no one on this planet knows the thickness, for sure, of the North Pole Ice Cap. It's one of the defining surface features of our planet from deep space. It is amazing to me, and to everyone who knows this, that we do not know the thickness. This is, a real, this is real exploration, and it seems to me um, that the value of an explorer to society has always been a function of their ability to communicate their findings. And uh, which is why, in part, not only are we um, generating the findings, going out there um, and, uh, and, and finding the information, but we have um, put huge effort into how we communicate those findings to the broadest possible global public people in Bolivia, people in, uh, in Burma, we want as many people as possible to understand the basic um, system uh, that is the Arctic Ocean and its ice cap, and to understand the processes that are driving the changes that are, that are unfolding at, at incredible speed up there, and the consequences, you know, why should people care that these processes are taking place, what are the consequences, and, uh, and I can pretty much guarantee that there will be very few people on this planet over the next two or three decades that will not absolutely feel the consequences of an ice cap that has gone uh, in the summer times. Um, weather patterns will change, most particularly rainfall patterns will change, marginal changes in rainfall uh, can be the difference between sustainable living and non-sustainable living, whether it's agricultural communities or urban, urban areas. And, uh, sea level will rise, this will be an accelerant, it's not just the melting of the ice cap in itself, putting the ice back into the water does not affect sea level one jot, um, but um, because it's ice that's already in the water and it changes its volume uh, as it returns to a liquid state, but the Arctic Ocean is 3% of the Earth's surface. If um, when you take the white protective heat shield, which is exactly what it acts as, um, away, uh, you get a 70% net increase in energy absorption from the sun. And the oceans are particularly good at retaining um, heat. Nearly all of the global sea level rise uh, since the Industrial Revolution has come about not from glasses and ice sheets that were above the sea, melting and putting additional water into the sea, it's actually come from just expansion of a fluid. As, as a fluid gets warmer, it, it, uh, it expands. And if you've got 70% more energy coming into 3% of the Earth's surface, the sea levels will be accelerated, sea level rise will be accelerated. So everyone is going to, it's a sort of uni, a unifying theme, or consequence, I should say, of, of this, um, uh, of this uh, ice cap um, disappearing. Most people live near the sea, not everybody, but most people, and most people live in the bigger cities, and uh, sea level rise will, will affect many. And what do you hope to achieve politically from this venture, considering all the, um, 
all the politics that's going on in terms of the, uh, the oil and gas resources in the Arctic. Uh, it is not the role um, of uh, Arctic Survey to conduct any sort of campaign. Um, whether a campaign follows on from Arctic Survey uh, remains to be seen. We need the support of the business community um, to help us uh, to fund this. Um, that we have um, a, a number of rights packages that are associated with the project and if, uh, if you're interested, if you're viewing this and, and would like to find out a little bit more about how to get involved, uh, we would welcome that and I'm sure you'll find the details on the website.